And we're going to have our next community asset, which is Galen Satterley. He's going to talk about Breadtopia and the Fairfield Food Collective. Now, Galen moved with his family to Fairfield from Oregon when he was about five. His K through 12 education was here, and he had two years at the Univers University of Iowa that was interrupted by an opportunity to pursue a successful year in photography. And then that, in turn, was interrupted by the discovery of a passion, home brewing of coffee and beer. So Galen went, to live, went on to live in Colorado, in Boston, and then in New Hampshire, where he met and eventually married his wife, Liza, in 2005. In 2014, this small family, now with a three-year-old, moved back to Fairfield to join Breadtopia, a family business founded in 2006. Galen and Liza now have three sons, and Galen is the vice president of operations at Breadtopia and the president of the Fairfield Food Collective, Galen Satterley. <clears throat> Thank you for that. So I wanted to have a big, nice, beautiful PowerPoint presentation um, for this event, but the last two weeks have been insanely busy for our, our company. Uh, it's one of those good problems to have, obviously. But um, yeah, so we, I mean, we started back in 2006. Uh, my parents, Denise and Eric, they founded Breadtopia. Uh, based on teaching people how to use sourdough starter and uh, how to bake with sourdough starter. Um, started with a passion and it evolved from there. So the business grew from selling uh, products to bake with at home, selling people sourdough starter, uh, and then giving just free tutorials online, teaching people how to use these products. And so the business had just continually grown, 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 grown. And, uh, you know, they moved the packing of products out of their garage into a, small, into a larger warehouse. And then from there, a larger warehouse. Then I showed up and I started taking on the uh, photography of the products and, the, and um, sourcing the grain and um, operation, uh, the operations of the flour mill. And so our grain and flour business uh, really just kind of exploded. And we had a successful growth year on year, which gave us a, a little more opportunity to uh, find and work with local farmers, as local as we can get, um, and uh, also make connections outside of uh, the Midwest as far as experimental farming of uh, grains and um, and wheat. So taking this business on, we, we continued to grow, continued to grow, and then we eventually moved into another, another warehouse in 16 that was much larger, 5,000 square feet. Um, and then uh, I think I convinced them to get an even, even larger location. Um, and then we eventually bought the building, the old Harper Brush building, uh, at the end of 19. And so we went from 5,000 square feet to 40,000 square feet. And, uh, you know, I was like, okay, well, we got, you know, maybe, I don't know, three, four years before we filled all this whole thing up. And so then March 13th happened, and everyone got locked down. Everyone started buying as much flour as they could, much sourdough starter as they could, so they can bake at home. And our business quadrupled literally overnight. And so we had to adjust and we had to, I, you know, I was still installing our, our large flour mill in, the opera, in our new building and uh, we couldn't get our organic certification because no one could come in to certify our, our, our facility. And so we, we just kept growing and we kept um, trying to educate people and, and help people with you know not even not getting the the flour from the grocery store, uh, how to adjust recipes based on the, on the ingredients you can get, and so the, we we gained a larger even larger following, and so by you know the <laughs> the good fortune of a bad situation we were able to um, reinvest our 
earnings back into this large building. And so what we did was we built out six commercial kitchens that were uh, that are rented out to uh, basically have an incubation of, of food businesses. And so we started building out all the kitchens and we started bringing people in. Um, we started sourcing uh, more directly with uh, uh, farmers and uh, helping them to get their grain to market. And from there, it, it, just, it just kept happening. And so we, um, we as, our, as we expanded and we grew, we realized, you know, we're, we're taking on a lot more cardboard boxes. We're taking on a lot more pallets. And so in, this do, in doing that, we've adjusted, you know, our business plan and, and, figuring, out, and figuring out how to recycle everything and how to um, uh, take care of all these extra um, you know, waste products. And so we've been adjusting as we're growing. And then, um, well, what else, where else was I? I mean, <laughs> there's so much going on. It's incredible. Um, so, yeah, okay. So we, uh, as the pandemic continued on, we, we gained a lot more followers and a lot more customers and satisfied customers, so they returned. So the, the business has kept expanding, expanding, expanding. Um, so we were able to actually uh, outfit the entire facility with um, solar power. And yeah, and so we were, when we designed out the kitchens, we made sure that everyone was using electrical equipment in the hopes that someday we would have solar power on this building. And, um, and so, yeah, so just recently we, we converted over to fully solar um, in our facility, and 90% uh, of all our kitchens are rented out to various food producers. Um, there's Taco Dreams that makes uh, street fair uh, Mexican food, um, Holy Patisserie, which makes croissants. Um, we have a homemade ice cream coming in. We have gluten-free baking. And then we also uh, opened up our own bakery, selling bread, um, granola, crackers, and you know, and actually, there's a lot more stuff to, that we're coming out with. So we've been, yes, yeah, so we've been incredibly fortunate, and our whole vision behind this facility is to create a uh, community based around food and sourcing as locally as possible. So, uh, sourcing organic uh, and um, essentially, uh, you know, living by our own our own mission of trying to help out the planet. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. We've been working with so we uh, with our flour mill we have a lot of um, uh, overs, which is just essentially bran flour that's you know collected into the the conicals stuff that we can't sell and use. So we've been working with uh, local people to take that material, which is a lot of material, and compost it back in the system. Um, so, you know, we're, we're trying to do, we're trying to be as, as, uh, as you know, net positive as, as possible with our operation, and we're moving forward like that. And, um, and then we're also going to have uh, a lot of events in our public area space where we can have, you know, lectures and, you know, luminaries come and talk about all the things that we're, you know, all the, you know, environmental impact and food security and all of the things that we're, we're trying to achieve. Um, we're going to, yeah, we start having those events in our facility as well. And yeah, so <laughs> there is an, uh, Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things, but they're, they're on the back burner, um, so, <laughs> well, I mean, no, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, the, it's the stuff that we've been working, you know, Bob and I have been talking about it, and we've been, uh, you know, trying to, to help out the local gardening uh, movement, um, trying to, trying to get a, a, a way to compost all of our um, uh, container, food containers, so, you know, that's one thing that we were kind of trying to focus on, and, and I think the Sierra Club was working on that. 
working on that. So, and TerraCycle, yes. And we're open, and we're hoping to get a TerraCycle Dropbox in our facility as well. Um, so, you know, and the latest thing is we're doing uh, sourdough pizza nights every Wednesday. So, drop on by. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're we're just we're trying to create a, a location where we can, you know, have uh, where we can we can all communicate and we can network and the, and everyone as much as uh, locally as possible can source within our uh, different vendors that, that sell and make food. Can you talk about food collection stores? I apologize. Yeah, so there's Breadtopia, which is the online business, and um, that is the, the, the sort of the, the funding of the Fairfield Food Collective, which is also uh, me and my parents' business. And the Fairfield Food Collective is that the collection of all of these various businesses and the location at where we're having these events and um, working in, in, in the, they own the building and, and you know building all that out. So does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Barbara. Can you talk a little bit about sourcing of grains and the heritage grains? Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we, we've we always sourced organic grains. Um, unfortunately, the majority of all those grains are grown in the upper Midwest uh, and the Western and Western landscapes. So we are... Um, we went away from the organic certification because we could not get certified. So we started looking at grains differently in that, you know, we're, we're talking a lot with a lot of farmers that they, they don't have the, they feel like they don't have the versatility to work with climate change um, under the organic certification model. And it becomes very difficult to adjust and, uh, and also make your payments on the farm and not go under. So we've been really focusing on regenerative agriculture farming of uh, wheat and rye. And so we, with doing that, we've been, we found a, a several farmers locally, one in uh, western Nebraska, uh, a couple in Wisconsin, uh, one in Minnesota, that are not necessarily certified organic, but they are regenerative, regenerative, not certified because they're working on that but they are able to adjust to the climate change and they're still, um, they're still under the, uh, they're really close to being organically certified, but with those slight little things that they need to, to, to do to adjust to the climate change. So um, the regenerative, it seems to be uh, almost a step beyond organic certification. And, that, you know, and that's where we wanna take this and uh, source as much as possible from them. So, you had a question, Barbara? Sure. Um, first one is, do you get any grain from like early morning work and stuff We don't. Um, it, well, I think they're maxed out as far as their, you know, they've got their market already established. Um, so, you know, I mean, we, we could, we're, I, I'm, I'm giving a bunch of grain to um, uh, Hickenbottom to do a test plot um, with einkorn and emmer. So we're working towards that. But it's, it, right now it's, very, it's really difficult because of, you know, there, there's been a couple bad years of, of grain growing. And so they're just trying to recover from that. You know, and, and obviously uh, when... Uh, the war happened in Ukraine, um, all of the grains started getting bought up. I mean, we, again, our business tripled overnight as far as grain and flour sales. Um, but we, because we're sourcing as locally as possible, at least within the United States, we're, we're, not, we're not essentially affected by the war, except for people's, like, you know, um, Fear and worry that the grain market's going to collapse. Um, so we've we've secure, secured a fair amount of grain with some of our key um, farmers that 
you know, so we should be well stocked in, in, um, by next harvest. Yeah. So. I completely forgot about it. Yes. So, um, yeah, of course. Yeah, that was the, one of the main things <laughs> that we wanted to do. So we teach everyone online how to bake, uh, and, and we've been doing that for years. And we, what we wanted to do is um, have a, a studio kitchen where we can have hands-on classes. And um, we actually just started renovating the upstairs portion of the building so that my mom and dad can move out of the, their current office, which is the, going to be the, commercial, the kitchen, test kitchen, the uh, studio kitchen that we're going to have all the classes. So once, once we get that renovated, then we can um, start having classes on everything from you know, obviously bread baking and, and croissants to uh, cheese making to um, uh, any type of food, you know, education that we can possibly find and, um, and bring in teachers and bring in, um, you know, people the best, at the best of their craft come in and, and be able to teach. So, yeah. Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> I forgot about that. Anything? Any other questions? Bob, have I forgotten, forgotten anything? <laughs> well, we could intimate about We're working on elderberries, yes, yeah. So we're, we're, you know, the other thing we're trying to do with um, all of these uh, essentially chefs and, and, and bakers that are in our collective is to be able to, to test new recipes using ingredients that we can grow locally. Um, understanding, you know, that if, if something like elderberries is, is, a, is a great product to grow locally, then we would have multiple markets created by having, you know, by all of these um, talented people using the ingredients in various ways, anything from, um, you know, syrups to um, uh, powders to, uh, you know, baking within muffins and, you know, everything in, like that. And um, so it, we're, we're really hoping to, to be able to um, uh, sort of be the, the epicenter of uh, learning and um, growth within our food community here in town. Um, so, Gailey, you're going to have a studio kitchen. Theoretically, you could film what goes on in that kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Put it on your yeah, exactly. So, you know, during the pandemic, we realized obviously we can't do in um, in-person classes. So the the thought is to double the um, kitchen, uh, the, sorry, the the classroom kitchen as an AV studio. So we could Zoom meet with uh, anyone that wants to to be a part of that. Or if you're, you know, you're out of town and you, and you still want to catch the class, then that's still an option. Let me ask one, another question. You're going to have an education component in your company. Yes. And are you going to be collaborating at all with the Fairfield people? Sorry, yeah. Uh, are you going to collaborate with the Fairfield people? Uh, they're going to be doing too. Yeah, so the question, yeah, so the, the Fairfield Food Gardening um, Initiative Fairfield in this garden initiative. Yes, we're going to be working with the, the, the garden initiative to with um, have classes uh, and teach people how to use the produce that they've grown in their gardens in, in, in a obviously a healthy way, but also a really tasty way. And so, yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you.